you can discuss anything. What page is that? Page one, page two, six. Okay. Noble disciple uh, means an Aryan disciple. An Aryan disciple can be a lay person or a monk. That is still necessary if you want to progress huh, from Sutapanna to Sakadagamin and Anagamin and Arahan. A lot of lay people, huh, because they cannot let go, so they cannot progress. Huh. The most they can attain huh, is stream entry. Huh. But there are some huh, during the Buddha's time, huh, like Chitta, Hataka and all that, huh, they go into seclusion. Huh. Their room, huh, their house, huh, the room becomes like a cave to them. Huh. They don't get out of their room. They practice day and night in their room until they attain the four jhanas and all that. Namaha Nama. Now, the to Why, why did the father regret? Because, I, I don't know, probably after that, I think I would do some influence on the phone. The big devil, the father expressed his death of a family of all the property of his son. I don't know, I mean, I just got and this is, I mean, the person who said, of course, so the fact that he very paid the death of normal heartbeat. You see, and the uh, just how I mentioned uh, in the Buddha's teachings, uh, a person is really dead uh, when three things leave him, uh, right? The vitality, consciousness, and body heat. Uh. So I would uh, suggest uh, that if any person wants to donate his organs, uh, that he should he can stipulate uh, this condition uh, that only when the body becomes cold uh, that they can uh, take away the organs, uh, because uh, people have downloaded. Uh, for me, uh, from the internet, uh, um, sometimes uh, it seems uh, there are some people uh, even declared to be brain stem dead. Uh. Uh, you know, some people get into accident uh, and their brain is damaged uh, and they have no chance of recovering uh, because the brain is damaged. So the brain stem, once the brain stem is dead, uh, the doctor says uh, this person is dead. Uh. And they start uh, taking the organs. But it seems there's some evidence uh, that when they do that, uh, certain people, uh, they, that body uh, becomes frightened. In the sense that the heart beat, the heart pumps faster. Blood pressure goes up and all that. Uh, so... So what can the family member do to assist that since it's a big clinically there so no chance of recovery? So and uh let me say that the last word hey. talk cannot be controlled. So we uh, wait a minute now. Nah. There's a difference between clinically dead now. Nah and brainstem dead, because I said uh, clinically dead uh, means the heart has stopped beating and the breath has stopped. Uh. But there have been cases uh, of people uh, even clinically dead, uh, declared clinically dead. Uh. After one or two days, uh, they revive. They come to life again. So they have not died. 
the doctor thought they have died. So in the um, in the case of uh, clinical death, uh, if the body is still warm, uh, usually it's not dead yet. Uh, and if you start taking the organs and all that, uh, it may not be good for him. <laughs> so as I mentioned just now, uh, if you have already signed the form, then you can add a condition uh, that uh, only when the body becomes cold, uh, the, the doctor can take it. Hmm? Oh. Hmm. Certain countries like Singapore, huh? they don't need you to sign. Huh? They assume that you have already donated. Isn't it? Yeah, Leslie? Yeah. Eh? What's it? Oh, the parents still have to consent, na. Oh. oh, I thought there's a certain law uh, that uh, they assume uh, that you have uh, no. Right. Malaysia definitely because it's uh, uh, Muslims and Christians uh, they don't like to have the body cut up I think it's also in the Majima Nikaya. I mean, if the family can afford to hire me to do after, that would be ideal. So if you can, like, once in a while, just go and uh, pay a visit, uh, at least uh, show that you uh, you you uh, know the, the burden also. Uh, they like to share a bit of that burden. Uh, and once in a while, uh, it's good. Uh, it's like moral, giving them moral support. Uh, but if you don't go at all, uh, you know, some, some people, they feel very annoyed. Uh.
you have to compromise a bit, lah. I guess. But uh, like in her case, uh, I know uh, that uh, she has some other sisters or uh, what looking after, uh, and uh, they don't really need her, lah. But once in a while, lah, uh, at least she show her presence, uh, to make them uh, happy, lah. But uh, like today, when I asked her to stay longer, uh, she said that the uh, the family, you know, if she doesn't, if she comes too long, uh, the family uh, may not be happy, lah. So it's not just that that relative who's sick, you know, it's that her own family itself. Uh, she feels that uh, if she comes too long, uh, they feel like she's neglecting her duty, lah. So it's a matter of compromise, lah. You know, we do what we can. Good people. No, at stream entry. Stream entry. Good rebirth, you don't have to learn the Dhamma. If you are a good Christian or so, you can go to heaven. Here it's about stream entry to become a Sotapanna. You must hear the Dhamma and understand the Dhamma. That's why the Buddha said, nah, even the Tsala trees, nah, if they can understand what is, if they can differentiate nah, between what is uh, wholesome and unwholesome, that means if they hear the Dhamma, even the trees also can become Sotapanna. In other words, nah, stream entry, becoming a Sotapanna, is by listening to the Dhamma and not meditation. If you study those uh, Mahayana Sutras uh, as I have studied uh, for nine years, uh, and you will know uh, that uh, there are contradictions uh, with the Theravada Suttas. Uh, that's one thing. Secondly, if you study the Suttas, uh, you find uh, among Mahayana Sutras themselves there are contradictions. Uh. And then the third thing uh, is that the Buddha gave a warning. In, I think in this Sangita Nikaya, I think it's 20.7. The Buddha said in the future, uh, people will not listen to his words. Uh, the discourses of the Buddha dealing with emptiness, uh, dealing with not self, dealing with suffering and all that. Instead, people want to study the words of later disciples. So, when the Buddha talks about the words of later disciples, that refers to Mahayana Sutras, lah, because Mahayana Sutras appeared 500 years after the Buddha's passing away. I started like by people like Nagarjuna, Asvagosa, Vasubandhu, etc. And in the biography of Nagarjuna, what the Chinese call Lung Supusa, he was asked, la, how is it na, that previously there were no such sutras? Now you say na, that these are the words of the Buddha, discourses of the Buddha. Then he said he went to the dragon palace under the ocean and took out all these sutras. That we cannot accept because firstly the Buddha says uh, that he does not have the closed fist of a teacher. He does not hide certain teachings. And also the Buddha said very clearly uh, that the true Dhamma is for all to see. Uh. Only deviant teachings uh, are secretive. If any teachings are secretive, uh, there must be something wrong with it. Uh, that's why they want to be secretive. Uh. So uh, that is uh, that's one thing. The other thing... Uh, is that during the Buddha's time, there were no books. So how could the Buddha have hidden the books in the dragon palace? There were no books during the Buddha's time. Books only appeared uh, 500 years after the Buddha's passing away. Right? Uh, thirdly, uh, if you look at the Mahayana Sutras, uh, at the back of the Sutras, uh, they always encourage people uh, to rewrite those Sutras and distribute. Now, during the Buddha's time, nobody could have... Uh, ask anybody uh, to write the sutras and distribute because there were no books uh, during the Buddha's time. So we know definitely all these writings appeared years later. And another thing uh, you find in Mahayana Sutras, uh, it is characteristic of Mahayana Sutras uh, to always talk about Mahayana and Hinayana, big vehicle and the small vehicle. And that shows uh, the Sangha had already split. Uh. But during the Buddha's time, the Sangha was one Sangha. There was no split Sangha, no Mahayana and Hinayana. 
So this Mahayana Sutras uh, must have occurred uh, hundreds of years after the Buddha's passing away, then uh, when the Sangha was really split into different sects. Uh. And the other thing is not only uh, later teachings, it's not only uh, Mahayana Sutras, but even in Theravada sect himself, uh, you have commentaries, eh? those are later teachings, you have Abhidhamma, you have Isudhi Maga, all those are later teachings. Of course, there are certain good things inside there, lah. but unfortunately, it is mixed with Adhamma, things that are contradictory to what the Buddha said. Lah. So because of that, now you have to be very careful. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So in other words, uh, they think they are Buddhists, uh, they are not Buddhists. The Buddha says uh, they are outsiders, they are not Buddhists. Which reminds me uh, that in certain suttas, uh, when the Buddha uh, taught to some external sect ascetics, uh, of course they argue with the Buddha, uh, and after argument and all that, uh, the Buddha showed them the true Dhamma, then they become converted. You know what they say? They say, oh, they are so fortunate uh, to hear the Buddha's words. Uh, and then they say, um, they thought that they were monks, but they were not monks. They thought they were following the true Dhamma. They were not following the true Dhamma. So, uh, unless uh, you have the good karma uh, to come into the true Dhamma, you can be misled uh, for many years. Uh, just like the Chitta Sangyutta, uh, we read about the external sect ascetic, the naked ascetic by the name of Kasapa. He spent 30 years uh, suffering uh, as a naked ascetic uh, and he gained nothing. And then when he met Chitta, then he was shocked to find uh, Chitta is a lay person uh, following the Buddha and has become an anagamin, has attained the four jhanas and will be reborn in the four jhana heaven. Then he realized that he wasted all his time and then he became a Buddhist monk. Uh, so a lot of people, uh, because of not understanding the original teachings of the Buddha, uh, we spend a lot of effort uh, like I did, I spent nine years in Mahayana Buddhism. At the end of it, then I got disappointed. So it's very difficult to change such people's mindset because they have not investigated the original sutta. If they took the trouble to investigate, then only they may realize. It's just like people follow other religions. They, they don't understand the Buddha's teachings, so they belittle the Buddha's teachings. But if only they took the effort, to understand uh, and they may appreciate. Which one? Which one? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, does that really, does that apply after life or in this present life? Once uh, a person uh, uh, possesses, the, that the sutta says, uh, the noble disciple uh, will possess these four qualities. Uh, that means once you become a noble disciple, uh, you will attain these things uh, uh, even in this lifetime. Uh, the only thing, it takes time. Uh, it takes time. Hmm. Just, um, because like you donate, uh, you have a good intention, uh, but uh, because you are doing something uh, that is not really beneficial, uh, so uh, the uh, merit from there uh, is very, very small, even though you have a good intention, uh, it's very small. Just like some people, they think uh, it is meritorious uh, to bow to the Buddha statue. If there's any merit, uh, it's negligible, uh, so small. Or it's uh, meritorious uh, to offer rice to the Buddha or to chant repentance and all this. Uh. 
uh, is uh, you have good intention, but the merit uh, is so small. If you support our Dhamma, but your intention is good, nah, there is some merit. Nah. However, if you believe in that wrong Dhamma, ah, that is bad karma. Having that wrong view, ah, believe in that wrong teaching, ah, that will bring you to a bad river. We find in the Sutta, there's one Sutta, I think earlier we read about the Devata Sangyuta, one of those uh, Suttas, uh, that in the heavens uh, you have disciples of external sect, ascetic teachers. Uh, in heaven also, even the teacher is teaching wrong, uh, but because they did good, uh, they support the teacher, and all. the only thing is they didn't understand maybe the teacher's uh, wrong view, uh, so they are reborn in the good heaven. Uh. Ah, if you support some other Buddhist sect, uh, it probably is not the it's not the sangha because uh, if you support them. Uh, in future, what they teach uh, is not the Buddha's teaching. Right? If you support the, the Sangha uh, that propagates the right Dhamma, that is meritorious, that is very meritorious. But if you support a Sangha that teaches something else, it's not the Buddha's teaching, then that is not supporting the Sangha. Do you know that in the monks Vinaya, in the monks Vinaya, it is mentioned, uh, the Buddha said uh, that his disciples uh, can have communion, uh, that means associate, uh, mix, uh, with even external sect ascetics uh, if they practice the same Dhamma Vinaya. That means uh, if a Hindu Swami, uh, what he practices uh, is the same as what the Buddha teaches, uh, we can consider him to be part of the Sangha. It's not that he wears the same robe, it's what he believes in, what he teaches. In the uh, Vinaya, if you go according to Vinaya, they are not considered part of our Sangha. Because uh, the Dhamma and the Vinaya, they practice is different. The Suttas or the Sutras they follow uh, is different from our Theravada's Suttas. And the Vinaya they keep... Uh, is also different. Not to mention Mahayana or Tibetan monks. Even uh, Theravada monks, uh, if they follow different Dhamma Vinaya, we also cannot mix with them, we cannot consider them as part of the Sangha. For example, if some monk, uh, even though he wears a Theravada robe, uh, he does not keep the precepts. Uh, we don't consider him as part of the Sangha. You know that? Uh, that's one thing. Secondly, uh, the Buddha did not other religions uh, consider the Sangha as all the monks, you know. A Sangha is defined uh, as a group of monks uh, who live within a Sima, within a boundary. Those who live within a certain boundary uh, are considered one Sangha. Once you step out of the sang of the boundary, uh, you are no more part of the Sangha. That's what a lot of people don't realize. So like for example, our monastery the Sima, the boundary, uh, is the boundary of our land, 15 acres land. Any monk uh, who's outside our boundary uh, is not considered part of our Sangha. Even though they are Theravada monks, even though they keep the same Dhamma Vinaya, only when they come into our boundary, uh, they are considered one Sangha. A lot of things they people don't understand. So that is one thing. Another thing is if they follow different Dhamma Vinaya, the Buddha says uh, we must not associate with them. We must not treat them as the same Sangha or monks. 
So if Mahayana monks, uh, they follow Mahayana sutras, uh, and they don't keep the Vinaya like we keep, uh, then we don't associate with them. However, a monk like maybe Kong Hai Vasa from Taiwan, he teaches, even though he wears the Mahayana robes, uh, but he teaches the Dhamma, like our Theravada Dhamma, we can accept him as part of the Sangha, even though he wears different robe. So what is important now uh, is whether the Dhamma and the Vinaya he practices uh, is the same as us according to the Vinaya. Okay, shall we stop here?